are these people? So we're going to do, I wouldn't say a deep dive, but at least kind of give, uh, we, we want you guys to know about this uh, on the thumbnail. This is Dan Gertlier. Uh, he's an Israeli tycoon. Uh, he's tied to uh, basically the cobalt industry in Congo. So you're probably wondering, well, why are, we, why are we talking about this guy? Why are we even bothering? So as we mentioned in the Morehouse segment earlier tonight, you probably saw the Congo flag being raised when Biden was speaking. The Congo flag was above him uh, as he was speaking at the commencement. So that was the subtle way of kind of saying um, there's a genocide happening in Congo too. Uh, I wish that was kind of said outright, but, you know, because I think people would miss uh, the here um, is very key to the genocide that is happening in Congo right now. And Biden is quiet. That Well, the administration is quietly because um, he's under sanctions right now given his alleged crimes in Congo. But the administration is quietly wanting to release those sanctions for their own profit. Well, what do we mean by that? I'll get to that later. But let's do kind of a deep dive on this guy just to get to know about him a little bit more. So let me try and catch up to you in the slides. Yeah. Um, so this is from TRT World. Um, and I'll probably have to read it because it's just subtitled. Um, yeah. But let's learn about Dan and who he is about. Israeli billionaire and mining magnate Dan Gertier, who has been sanctioned over alleged corrupt mining practices in the Congo, is in headlines again. This time, the U.S. Treasury has blacklisted a Congolese national and accused him of assisting Gertier. But who is Dan Gertlier and why is he so controversial? Gertlier hails from a successful diamond trading family in Tel Aviv. You can probably just play it. Yeah. His grandfather co-founded Israel's Diamond Exchange in 1947. Gertlier arrived in Congo in 1997 as a 23-year-old diamond dealer seeking rough diamonds. He quickly struck a chord with former Congo president Joseph Kalia and is accused of lever leveraging his friendship with him. It is alleged that Gertlia made a fortune by becoming an unofficial gatekeeper for mining deals across the country. In 2000, during the civil war in Congo, Gertlia reported offered $20 million to the Calabas for weapons to bolster their efforts to remain in power in exchange for a monopoly on Congo's diamond market. In February 2017, Gertler made an estimated $400 million after he sold his stake to two mines in Congo to commodities giant Glencore for $960 million. The deal cost the Africa Republic hundreds of millions of dollars. In December 2017, the U.S. Department imposed sanctions on Gertler for all of his alleged corrupt business deals. But earlier hired trans lawyer Alan Gersowitz. See yep. all these things <laughs> like <Yep. laughs> yeah. um, to get the sanctions lifted during the last days of the Trump administration. Gertler was granted a sanctions waiver, which gave him access to his frozen funds and financial institutions. But in March 2021, the Biden administration reimposed sanctions on Gertler. Okay. So, so you get the gist. And mm -hmm. given that Jerswitz is involved, you know there's some shit. 
right? Yeah. So yes, now, so, so basically, Trump um, released the sanctions on Gertlier. Biden reimposed them three years ago. And now, three years later, mm. seek access to Congo's medals, White House aims to ease sanctions. Of course they do. A deal to allow is to a deal to allow the Israeli billionaire Dan Gertlier to cash out. You can zoom out. His mining yeah. positions in the Congo has enraged human rights activists and some government officials. So this is from the New York Times uh, and is written by Eric Lipton. So he reports. Yeah, keep that with a grain of salt to... as we're reading. Right. It's the New York well, Times. But it's yes. the New York Times. However, yeah. um, where will the propaganda show up? That's what I'm wondering. You know? Well, let's look for it. Um, yeah. A deal to allow the Israeli billionaire Dan Gertler to cash out his mining positions in the Democratic Republic of Congo has enraged human rights activists and some government officials. A cobalt mine... Uh, no, that's from the picture, so I need to read that. Three years after the Biden administration officials tightened sanctions on a billionaire Israeli mining executive for corrupt business practices in the Congo... They have reversed themselves and are offering the executive a deal they hope will boister the supply of a metal vital to electric vehicles. Pause. The plan would allow... Me and yes. Indy just covered a story on Gaza's, like, future plans, like the, mm -hmm. the plans that Israel has for the Strip, right? It included large electric vehicle manufacturers. Hmm. Right. So, I mean, this was literally akin to like Hitler's uh, Germany plan model or whatever. Right. Right. Like this was literally they, they had pictures and everything to go with. It. So, yeah, look out. Look out for that from how do we miss that? Um, right. So basically, they're just using this blueprint for Africa as well. It sounds yeah. like. Um. Yep. Well, this is anyway. not just that, that it will be like they will need the resources of the global south for this. So, right. yeah, as always. But anyway, the plan would allow the executive, the executive Dan Gertler, to sell off his remaining stakes in three giant copper and cobalt mining operations in Congo. Once Mr. Gertlier sells his positions, the Biden administration hopes Western-leaning companies will be more willing to invest in Congo, perhaps delivering a greater supply of cobalt to the United States as automakers race to increase domestic production of batteries. Mm -hmm. But certain state and Treasury Department officials strongly oppose the effort, saying that Mr. Gertlier should not be allowed to profit from his deal-making which the Biden administration earlier argued had cheated the citizens of Congo out of more than $1 billion in mining revenues. Mm -hmm. The son of one of Israel's biggest diamond dealers, Mr. Gertler started to invest in Congo nearly three decades ago. He eventually became one of the biggest holders of mining rights in the Central African nation and the target of accusations that he had enriched himself at the expense of a population that is among the world's poorest. Mr. Gertler did not respond to a request for comment through his lawyer. Of course he did. However, Mr. Gertler has long disputed corruption allegations, arguing that his Congo investments were above board, providing the country billions in taxes and creating thousands of jobs, of which they are underpaid and overworked, but, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm sure that's nothing to him anyway. Um, those in the Biden administration pushing for the settlement deal see it as a solution to a competitive disadvantage for the United States, one, could, one that could only grow as automotive manufacturers continue to expand their production of electric vehicles. And it is in keeping with the administration's policy positions that embrace alternative energy solutions to fossil fuels. But it also illustrates, illustrates the compromises that world leaders often acquiesce to when efforts to hold individuals accountable for their actions collide with the political and economic interests of their countries. As it now stands, Chinese-based mining companies own or have a major stake in most cobalt production sites in Congo, 
which produced 78% of the world's supply of the metal last year. The last large America-owned mining company was pulled out of Congo in 2020, just as the electric vehicle revolution was taking off. Two senior Biden administration officials who were not authorized to speak on the record said their belief that the Western firms would continue to avoid investing in the Congo mining sector as long as Mr. Gertler remained involved, given the continuing concerns about corruption in the industry there. The proposed deal, they said, will give a clean slate to Congo and help the nation fight more corruption more broadly. But human rights activists are openly challenging the plan. To ease sanctions now seems ludicrous, giving Gertler a free pass to profit from ill-gone gains, said Anik van Woltenberg, the executive director of RAID, a nonprofit that monitors mining transactions in Congo and other countries. The deal leaves Gertler enriched, unscathed, and unaccountable, with little regard for those who matter most, the people of the Congo. The proposed deal comes as the Biden administration is planning tariffs on an array of Chinese imports, including electric vehicles and advanced batteries, part of a recent wave of protectionist positioning by both Republicans and Democrats. The State Department did not respond to a request for comment, but officials involved in the negotiations and on Capitol Hill confirmed to the New York Times that objections have been raised from inside the department. For now, according to senior Biden administration officials, a framework has been presented to Mr. Gertler's lawyers in the past week that would allow him to cash out his stakes at Komoto Copper Company and Mutanga Mining, both primarily owned by Switzerland-based Glencore and Metalco RTR, which is owned in part by the government of Kazakhstan. Very nice. Mr. Mr. Gurley no longer has a formal ownership in the Glencore mines. The company bought him out in 2017, but he still paid royalties on copper and cobalt production at these facilities. Cognitively, Mr. Gurley's business entitled entities now earn about $100 million a year in royalty payments from Congo. Excuse me by administration of officials estimated, even though he is under U.S. sanctions that prevents global banks from doing business with him and limit his ability to buy or sell business ventures. Oh, poor you. Um, these three mining operations alone produce nearly 30% of the world's supply of cobalt, which is important in longer-range electric vehicles because it helps give the batteries the ability to hold more of a charge. There are also major global sources of copper and metal increasingly in demand as a revolution in artificial intelligence is prompted that, prompting the construction of new data centers filled with copper wiring. As a condition to allow the asset sales, Mr. Gertler would be required to release a detailed statement of any remaining con holdings in Congo, which would then be examined by an independent auditor. While this review is on the way, half of the proceeds of the asset sale would be held in escrow. Any remaining assets Mr. Gurley tries to hide could be seized by the government there. Mr. Gurley will also have to withdraw lawsuits against human rights leaders in Congo who have been critical of his role in the mining industry there, such as Song Claude Imputu, a spokesman for Congo is not for sale, which opposes the deal. Eventually, under the plan, Mr. Gurley could get a general license from the United States that will broadly reopen international financial markets to him worldwide. If he was accused of corruption violations again, full sanctions could be reimposed, the officials said. The Biden officials acknowledged that the deal was motivated by a desire to find ways to strengthen economic ties with Congo, as well as aid the country, mm, okay, which has been played by a history of corrupt mine deals and child labor abuses at makeshift mines. The Biden administration has already committed to help finance the expansion of a rail network that will link Congo and neighboring Zambia to Angola on the South Atlantic Ocean. The link would allow the massive mines in Congo and Zambia to more direct supply battery manufacturing plants in the United States or allied countries. So notice, mm -hmm. even here, this rail link has nothing to do with the Congolese, nothing to do for the people there, Kind of similar to this, um, what are they building in Israel? This port? Yes. In the guise of 
humanitarian, humanitarian aid. aid. Same shit here. Um, yeah. But so far, no major mining company has publicly disclosed a plan to reinvest in Congo. Right. And why would they? Yeah. Um, the deal with Mr. Gertler has been pushed most aggressively by Amos Holstein, an advisor to President Biden on energy security issues. Mr. Holstein has also been working closely with other nations to expand access by Western-leaning players to cobalt and copper mines in Africa. Mm -hmm. When we said we'll go to the moon, nobody knew how do we get there, Mr. Holstein said in January while in Saudi Arabia at a mining industry event that included discussions with mining industry representatives from Congo. We just said we would, and we made it happen. So that's how we have to approach this energy transition. Two U.S. government officials involved in the negotiations objected to the role that Mr. Holstein has played, suggesting that he has tried to force others in the foreign policy and human rights divisions of the government to bend to his will. But senior vice... Senior Biden administration officials noted that the White House always played a coordinating role in major sanctions cases. Question has also come from Capitol Hill. The Biden administration has refused to be transparent about any framework for a deal on this issue or about who is guiding the policy. Senator Jim Reich, Republican of Idaho, said in a statement to the Times. The critical question is, what prevents Gertler indefinitely from just returning to Congo even now or in the future administration. Mr. Gertler's de dealings with Congo have been a source of tension with Washington for decades after he built close ties with a previous president, Laurent Kaliba, and his son, Joseph Kaliba, who became president after his father was killed. Mr. Gertler was targeted with sanctions in December 2017 during the first year of the Trump administration as the Treasury Department claimed Congo had been cheated as a result of opaque and corrupt mining and oil deals involving the billionaire, which he secured at discount prices because of his ties with the Kaliba, Kalila family. Mr. Gertler almost immediately began to fight back. He hired a legal and lobbying team that at one point included both Alan Joshwitz, the former Harvard law professor, mm. and Louis J. Riesch, Friesch, the former IDF director, with appeals reaching directly to Treasurer Secretary Stephen T. Munchen, among others in the Trump administration. Yeah. Shortly before Mr. Trump left office, the Treasury Department moved to ease the sanctions with no public notice after Mr. Gottlieb, through his lawyers and associates in Israel, argued to American officials that there was some kind of national security interest served by allowing him to do global deals again. By March 2021, the Biden administration reimposed the full sanctions, asserting that granting Mr. Gertler relief was inconsistent with America's strong foreign policy interests in combating corruption around the world. Mr. Gertler kept battling. This time, he enlisted Felix Kisekidi, sorry for the pronunciation, Congress president, who wrote a letter to Mr. Biden in 2022 urging the United States to revoke the sanctions. If sanctions are perceived by foreign investors as a dead end to the liquidation of, the, of their entitled, entitles and the cessation of their activities, this anxiety would surely lead to the disappearance of foreign direct investment in Congo, Mr. Chisekedi wrote. Mm. Last year, Mr. Gurley wrote a series of letters to human rights leaders in Congo, Europe, and the United States telling them that the sanctions had been crippling, and that he was ready to sell his remaining Congo assets to get the punishment lifted. The essence of the sanctions is not merely to punish, he wrote in one letter. It is equally envisaged that for the sanctions regime to work, they should promote positive change. The human rights groups say they do not object to allowing Mr. Gertler to dispose of his remaining financial stakes in mines and other holdings in Congo, but they said he should be forced to simply forfeit them. There is extensive documentary evidence of Mr. Gertler's corrupt activities in the Congo, said a statement issued by Congo is not for sale, which was provided to the Biden administration to object to the proposed deal. The group demanded that Mr. Gertler receive no further financial gains for illicitly acquired assets. Yeah. But the Biden administration officials said this exception was unrealistic. Of course Mr. they Gertler did. Mr. Gertler is already... What? Of course they did. Of course. Yes. 
Yeah. Mr. Gurley is already earning royalty payments and would not be willing to simply walk away from his investment. Oh. So. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I know you probably have thoughts, but I'm I sure. I do. I wrote them down. I wrote them down on this okay. plate because I didn't have any paper. Ah. So it was on the plate. Um, it mentioned AI, which we've covered. It is yes. real specific stuff with AI. Um, yes. And just in general. Lavender, for one. Yeah. And the, and the one that's super long that you got bored of um, as well. Right. That this is partially the. The, the you know new new world order right a new world order awaits new world order stuff wef stuff of transhumanism and all that stuff shout out to whitney webb and crew um but to do that they need electrical components right which mm-hmm. this country isn't the only one right we covered right. way back in the day uh with jay buffon i think that zimbabwe banned lithium export right yes you know burkina yes. faso i think followed suit with a lot of their stuff and uranium right for the french yes right so that's power for that same system right so you're seeing a lot of these african countries pull back a lot of the resources here and what's been happening colin in burkina faso in the congo and in... they're rising up well and also well, there's a lot of coups and possible assassination attempts with people with CIA badges left on their body. So right. you're seeing helicopters with Iranian leaders fall out the sky. You're seeing, you know, plenty of people in South America cooed and whatever. And we're kind of the only country known to do that kind of stuff. I don't know if you remember, but um, <laughs> so I think that that goes hand in hand with these resource grabs, right? And you will see yeah. us in any way possible try to grab these resources. And you've brought on, yes. brought on, what is her name? She is a doctor. I want to say Malawi or um, she's one of the African ladies you bring on frequently. Um, doctor somebody. Um, you'll remember it in a second. That talked about, you know, keeping African resources in Africa. You know, mm-hmm. so Doctor Afri- Africana. Is that that's what you're it. Talking about? I think so. Okay. Um, but yeah, I I just see America willing to do anything and everything to use these resources. So uh, yeah, and definitely Including... and like we talked about it with the uh EV production in the Gaza Strip that Israel wants. You know, this kind of stuff is going to go hand in hand with that. What do you think? Elon Musk fights so hard for government contracts, you know, keep Tesla right. in business a little bit. He might have to play ball sometimes. But mm-hmm. um, anyway, but you you have a little bit more of this, I think, right? I have a little bit more. Um, um, so this was a tweet that I found from Slav, Slav Free Spirit, uh, at Slav Free Spirit. Uh, so they write, um, American Israeli mercenary Benjamin Rubin was captured by a failed coup in the Congo. Like I was Rubin saying, is a paid mercenary of the former head of the Israeli spy agent Mossad and the Jewish billionaire, our boy Dan. Yeah. This is the second failed coup by Yoshi Cohen, who has been banned from Congo. So mm. this might be a little hard to read, but I want to read some of it. Um, yeah. Dan Gurlier, an Israeli who looked at looks the Congo at the heart of genocide. Can you zoom in a bit, please? Yeah, here, you know let me there. try that. Okay. I have to spend that. That's all right. One of the deadliest conflicts in history is currently taking place in the Congo. A genocide mostly motivated mainly of a bloody conflict opposing several armed factions. An Israeli man, Dan Gurlier, is at the heart of this genocide. He has illegally seized several mining resources, copper, gold, diamonds, and oil, in Congo in recent decades. According to calculations by the Congo is Not for Sale uh, coalition between 2003 and 2021, Dan Gertler acc- accumulated $1.95 billion in royalties to the detriment of the Congolese people. 
He currently earns no less than $254,000 per day. For this, he did not hesitate to sow chaos in the region. From the 2000s, he moved closer to the regime of Laurent Desiree Kalila, then in power in Congo, and acquired mining licenses at ridiculous prices. Some mining contracts included the delivery of weapons from which are currently flooding the country and fueling conflict and massacre. He is also accused by local associations of supplying weapons to armed factions favorable to him. Dan Gertler resides currently in Israel, where he is one of the biggest fortunes and owns nearly 12% of the global cobalt market. So, very rich and very mm -hmm. much corrupt as hell. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, I want to play this to kind of end the segment. Uh, going to listen to a little bit of Malcolm X. Happy birthday, uh, Brother Malcolm. Um, this is from at Joe underscore Basley, who he writes, The situation of the Congo where genocide is currently ongoing is older than what, than what most think of, it, of us think it is. Even during the time of Malcolm X, he emphasized that the killing in the Congo is as a result of instigation by European powers, and we can, well, Israelis proxy of that, yeah. who are fighting each other over the mineral wealth of the Congo. Even until date in 2024, the Congo genocide continues, and the main reason is due to Congo's mineral resources and establishment of public, puppet government in Congo by European neocolonialists. So, mm, I think let's see what... Yeah, so let's play... Malcolm to see what he has to say regarding the Congo. That the white people should be ashamed of the deplorable situation that has been existing in the Congo, which is not the fault of the Congolese, but which is the result of instigation by European powers who are fighting each other over the mineral wealth of the Congo. Now, to make it appear that the Congolese themselves are criminals or brutes because they're reacting to these uh, uh, injustices that they've been victimized by is, is again ducking the question. Shambi is the murderer of Lumumba, who was the rightful prime minister of the Congo. Shambi is the man whose forces uh, fought against the United Nations forces and against the United States. And despite this criminal past of Shambi, uh, now the United States is backing Shambi, uh, who has hired uh, South African mercenaries, who are hired killers to disrupt the uh, peaceful efforts of the freedom fighters from Stanleyville to uh, make the type of country there that they want. And it is this American support of Shumbi, actually, that's at the root of the whole problem. I mean, so, what did they do to him? Is older. What happened to Malcolm? <laughs> well, yep. Um, yeah. The same. So, also Haiti recently, right? They pulled similar stuff there yeah. too. So, yes. Yeah. You know. So, um, you know, tell us all this time with, with good memories, don't it? You just yeah. remember too much. Um, <laughs> I think that. So, uh, yep. Anyway, I think that. The, I, so sorry, Malcolm. That's why go so we've talked. This. So we talked uh, not a lot, but I mean, we've talked a little bit more about Congo. So, but yeah, just to kind of give you guys an idea, you know, ultimately, all this money is. And and that's the kind of thing in this article that's wild. It's not even the idea of like, how about paying people who are working at these mines a living wage? No, it's to kind of get off this guy just so that they're able to exploit these people even more for American uh, for electric vehicles in the West. Yeah. So you know, so the fact that Biden and the and again, given this is the New York Times, so obviously we're gonna take what they're saying with a grain of salt. But even with the article, I can't see the lie necessarily, given what no. we know, kind of what you share regarding Gaza. This is yeah. kind of coming in line with you know what we've kind of reported on over the last few months. And the fact that of course the Biden administration is being very coy, very quiet about this, like this should be major news. And yeah. the fact that it's not, now granted, you know, it's not going to be, you know, because given what's happening, not getting much 
play at all, uh, even in independent media, and we definitely should change that. But even just with what you mentioned to me, because I didn't watch how, uh, how do we miss that episode like this past week, yep. you know, just making those connections that, no, what's happening in Gaza is very much related, if not similar, to yep. what's happening in Congo. And to all those people who are saying like, oh, why are we so concerned about Gaza? Like, we should be focusing on the Congo, bitches. Like, this is yeah. why you should care about everything. Both. Everything's because connected. <laughs> everything like, is connected. Yeah. So what's affecting the Palestinians is also affecting Africans, too. Yep. So. Well, as you know, Colin, just talking about these things is why we're demonetized. You can go to codeshv.com slash Indie News Network. Get around that system a little bit. Hook us up, you know. Um, you scan that QR code on your screen as well, or put exclamation mark donate in the chat. Leave us a little super chat if you want to do it that way. Um, you know. Also, if you can't do that, like and subscribe. Very easy. Hit the share button. We're trying to get get to two K. We're fifty fifty people away. Fifty people got to hit that subscribe button. Hopefully, it's lighting up while I say subscribe. Subscribe. Do it again. Subscribe. Do it. I think one person sub while we were live. I nice. Think. Look at you so, doing it. I think. Leave a so, comment too. Let us know what you think. 